What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex. This is Ask the Cheese Gaming. I'm back with a new video review for you today. In this one, I'm going to be continuing my 16-bit trend as of late to take a look at Hyperzone for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This game was developed and published by HAL Laboratory and had a North American release date in September of 1999. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find out the exact date, so if anyone does find that, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Everything I see just says September. So the first question we have to ask is, what exactly is Hyperzone? Well, to start, it's kind of a cross between F-Zero and Star Fox. Or, to put it another way, it's a Mode 7 rail shooter that's set in the year 2089. The planet Earth has become completely unlivable and uninhabitable. See, humanity has looked upon to the stars. They've begun colonating various parts of the solar system and realized that there's an asteroid belt in between Jupiter and Saturn. The only problem is, when they tried to colonize this asteroid belt, they found out they weren't alone there. It's your job to go to this area in the asteroid belt and blast, dodge, and destroy your way through seven levels. The more stuff that you blow up, the more points you occur, and if you earn enough points at the end of the level, you get to get a ship upgrade. At the end of each level, there's a boss. As I just said, earn enough points through the levels, you get to get a new ship with a total of six throughout the game. If you can manage to survive all seven levels, the game then resets where you can play your stronger, more powerful ship at the end. And it just continues like this infinitely each time through. When you first start off the game, you got three lives to try to get through as far as you can. And I could definitely say this game gets real tough real quick. not a whole lot to the controls though for this game you just simply mash on the wire b button and try to make as much stuff go boom use the d-pad to dodge one neat little feature about this game though is that normally you're kind of set at a specific pace in the game similar to a game like f-zero but you can slow yourself down the only downside is if you slow yourself down too much your ship starts to take damage or as you can see from this gameplay footage if you don't stay within the lines and go off too far to the side, your ship can also take damage that way as well. One major point about Hyperzone that I do want to make for you is this rather strange art design. This game just has a really bizarre art style to it. Just the sprite work is really strange. Some may say it's just downright ugly. I don't know. Personally, I think it's kind of cool and it's just strange looking. It's unlike anything that I've seen yet for the Super Nintendo system. And speaking of art and design of the game, the music and sound design in this actually fit quite nicely in the overall motif and feel of it. No complaints here. So, overall, is Hyperzone worth getting and adding to your collection or playing in an emulator? Well, honestly, yes. Sometimes it's nice just to sit back, relax, and just make stuff go boom. There's not much here beyond that. It's just Mode 7 rail shooter trying to dodge and live as long as you can and just blow as much stuff up as you can. But you know what? A simple gameplay, it's nice. And the best part is you can still actually find this game out in the wild for like 10 to 15 bucks. So if you're uh, on a budget and like to collect games like I am, definitely worth picking up and adding to your collection. Or you can, if you're unsure about it, I'm sure you can find it on an emulator and play it that way and see what you think. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoy this review, please feel free to leave me a like, comment, and a share. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.
as I said previously, this game can get pretty tough and some of these bosses, ugh, they're just brutal.